welcome to a, another week of our virtual pre-K art day here at the Living Arts and Science Center. If you are new to our Tuesday virtual pre-K art days, welcome. My name is Miss Ashley and behind the camera we have Miss Heather. So while we're working today, if you have any comments or questions or just want to say hi because you miss us so much, just comment along and Miss Heather will let me know and we can kind of talk, talk you through your questions. Um, today, I am very excited. We are going to be reading this book called When We Were Alone. And then we are going to make some floral masterpieces. I have a lot of garden clippings here that are drying out under my paper towels. And we're going to be using them to make a 3D masterpiece after our story. So let's dive into our story so we can get crafty. Let's come on in. If you have this book, Go ahead and grab it and follow along, but if not, Miss Heather's going to get in close. So when we were alone. <laughs> Today, I helped my Kokum in the flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nokum, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some. When I was your age, at my home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school we went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All of the children were dressed the same, and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nokum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes in the fall when we were alone and the leaves had turned their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground we would pile the leaves over our clothes they had given us, and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I, all, I wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate, and they reached all the way to the ground. When my Kokum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nokum, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It makes us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all of our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nokum said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone, the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into our short hair that they had given us. And we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear my hair long. After my Kokum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, here little bird, eat, so you will get big and strong. And her words sounded just like a poem. Nokum, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some. When I was your age, at home in my community, 
My friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Nokum said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes in the summer when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kokum in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate banak. The tea was hot and the banaks was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My Kokum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Kokum, why do you and Nokumos always spend time together? Nokum said, well, no see some. When we were your age at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokuma separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nokum said. Because we were together, they th we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter when we were alone and we were sure nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts in the crisp, cold air and we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family. The end. I really like this story. I love that Nokum and her family value family and their heritage so much. So while we are talking, or while we're crafting, I'll tell you a little bit more about Cree language and where people speak it, because I looked it up after I read this book. But let's talk about what we're going to need today for our craft. So you're going to need a piece of paper, some glue, and some garden clippings. So I went outside to our garden just outside of this window here at the Living Arts and Science Center, and if I grab a bunch of different flowers and leaves and vines, and I grabbed a bunch that all looked really different. They've been sitting here for about 30 minutes drying. Since we're gonna be using glue, you wanna have them as dry as you can. And our masterpieces, they're not gonna last forever because these are living things that are gonna start dying now that I've picked them. So you'll get to enjoy your masterpiece for a couple days and then it'll start to dry out. So I went ahead and I thought of two different ideas that we could do today. So Nokum and her family talked about their beautiful hair and their beautiful clothing that they wore. So I thought you could pick which one you wanted to do today. If you wanted to make a hair or if you wanted to make a dress. I'm gonna work on the hair today, but if you wanted to do the dress in a similar way, that would be a really great idea. But I'm gonna show you something real quick. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. If you ever get really nervous about your drawing skills because you've not had much practice, you can definitely trace something and, um, and you'll probably feel a little bit better. So I know I haven't had much drawing practice, so I don't think my drawing is very good yet. With more practice, it would get better. So I use tracing paper. You can probably use baking paper. It's probably in your cabinets at home. 
but you want to be able to see through it. So what I did with my tracing paper, I printed out a picture and I used a pencil and I just traced the outside of that dress and the outside of my face here. And then with the side that I colored on, the pencil side, I flipped it over and then used like a popsicle stick or something really hard and I rubbed those lines. So the pencil marks are on the under part. And when I rub this hard thing on top, it transfers those pencil marks. And then you can go back over it with something darker, with a Sharpie. So if you're nervous about your drawing skills, try uh, tracing them first. All right, so I'm gonna work on some hair today. I'm really excited to make a beautiful, long piece of hair out of what I gathered today. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this piece of paper plate, and I'm gonna dip my leaves and stuff in this. I think it's gonna be easier for me to glue them doing it this way, but we'll try it together and see. Maybe you just wanna put a little dot on your paper that works best for you and that's okay. I think this is gonna work best for me today for this project. So this is gonna to have to be lots of layers. So I'm gonna start with the bottom layer. I'm gonna imagine in my brain how big I want her hair to be. I actually want it to be huge. I want her to have huge hair. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna dip, here's my thumb into that glue, get a little bit on there. Not too much. I'm gonna set that down. And I'm gonna keep going until I have a good base. And I picked a lot of these leaves and stuff because of the shapes. I liked that they had a lot of different shapes in there gonna make the hair look really natural, I think. All right, you can see that it's kind of layering on top of each other. And I definitely wanna make sure I see this person's neck. I think that'll make it look best. All right, so one more, one or two more for our base. When I was thinking about this project, it kind it reminded me if you've ever seen the Pixar short Someone to Lava. The mountains hair at the end, the girls, the volcanoes mountain hair. It's made out of vines and moss. It reminded me of it. All right, so I love that I have this huge shape here. So this is my base, my bottom layer. Now, I'm gonna come in with some of these smaller pieces, these vines that kind of look like braids, and I'm gonna add them on top. So I'm gonna give her some bangs, maybe. Some bangs that kind of look like braids a little bit. So these will be cool, closer to her head. And I'm gonna turn some backwards and some forwards because the back of the leaves have a lighter color and the front of the leaves have a darker color. So that way you have a lot of variety. And if I ever get too much glue, I just wipe it on the edge of my paper plate. All right, I love the look of that. I like that it looks like bangs braids and I also like that when it my paper moves it kind of jiggles along with it makes it look really cool so now let's add a little color in I also grabbed some flowers so maybe this is the flower she tucks behind her ear so I'm going to put it near where I think her ear is going to be what do you think so far friends what else can I I also grabbed these really small hydrangea flowers. So I'm gonna add some more color into this picture. Dip some 
some of these small flowers. I'm gonna put them all over. Like she did in her story, she braided the, leaf, the grass into her hair. I'm gonna pretend this person put leaves and flowers into her braids in her hair. Because I like that part of the story. All the way down. few more things. I also grabbed some of these little seed pods out there too because I liked that they looked almost like dreads. I don't know if you've ever seen dreaded hair. Maybe this person has a lot of texture in their hair because of their history and heritage. So in the book we read, they used the language Cree. And so I did some Googling, some quick Googling. I encourage you guys to do some Googling of yourself because I learned a little bit when I, when I was researching. So Cree is an indigenous language. So it's of the native people and it's actually in Canada. So the native indigenous people of Canada spoke Cree. All right, I think this is beautiful. Now, I'm not going to glue it on here yet. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea. So if we were to do the same thing with our dress, maybe that these are the ruffles on the bottom of her skirt. So she's got a really full skirt here. Kind of like a tulle, like a big tutu dress. And then these small things that I used as her bangs and her braids, maybe it's lace around her, around her shirt. I think that's really pretty. And then maybe she's got some really big shoulder pads or shoulder dressings. So the same things I used as hair pieces could also be designed in a really cool dress form. And that's it. So we've made some really beautiful masterpieces that'll last you for a few days if they lay flat. So definitely let them dry a little bit before you pick them up, because I bet if I picked this up right now, some pieces would fall off. A few, not too many. So definitely share your masterpieces with us. Comment below with pictures. We would love to see them. And I'm going to come around here because we always end our pre-K art day with a sing-along. So we like to sing the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. If you know the words, sing nice and loud for anyone around you who doesn't know the words. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And um, we do this every Tuesday at 10 a.m. I hope you follow along. Or if you're not following along, I hope you share this video with some of your friends. And tune in next Tuesday. So I'm going to start us off, and when I nod, it's time for you to join me in singing. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week, and we hope to see you again soon.